the, the degeneration of beauty comes from one thing, actually. And what has been pushed down our throats since the baby boomers took charge? Political correctness. Political correctness is not just a tool to shut right-wingers up. Political correctness is ultimately the propounder of relativism. And relativism is not having the conscientiousness to distinguish the pieta, the pieta from the levitated mass. To give some further context, the levitated mass is regarded as our generation's pieta. 10 million of taxpayer dollars to be acquired by LACMA. Relativism's central claim is that objective standards and expectations belong in the trash. And I'm telling you guys right now, and we're going to break this down, there are institutional roots as to why this is. So if you look at the 1800s, all art education was like atelier-based art training. It was like any other trade school, right? You want to be a mechanic? You know, you want to learn plumbing? What do you do? You go to somebody who knows the skill, and you, you apprentice under them. But the advent of art universities are a completely different creature, and it's nested in the Frankfurt School. So in 1983, John W. Murphy of the Frankfurt School publishes Art and the Social World through the Studies in Soviet Thought, a study into Marxist aesthetics and its intellectual heritage. <coughs> art and the Social World is what all the art critics and theorists that are in the universities today use as a foundation. It's all nested on this. It's built upon this foundation. According to Murphy, the role of art should transcend representing conditions of beauty and truth towards a practice of what is deemed as socially beneficial. Art should serve as a political arm rather than a religious one. You fast forward to the top five art universities today. They're all being taught by radical postmodern ideologues on the left. The first person to catch wind of this was American cultural critic Tom Wolfe. So this story is pretty interesting because Mr. Wolf was a lover of art, of art history in New York City when the art world was going through this renaissance. He walked into this gallery in Soho and he saw all these blank canvases. Usually, an artist produces a series, takes maybe two to three years. The curators and critics come to the studio. We determine what works fits mo most cohesively based on the theme. We work out a statement. It's this, that's usually the, the go-to template. But he saw all these canvases, so he got excited. He walked in and he goes, to this front desk girl wearing her all black ponytail, pretty enough where you want to talk to her, but she definitely studied a liberal arts degree, so she has a little snarl in you. That little, that dissonance was there, that typical image. He walks in and says, look at this artist here. Put all this work up. He's already getting ready for the series. He's planning it this ahead of time. Who is this artist? Who, who's the, what is he producing? And she looks at him and says, no, this is the art show. This is the art show. These are white canvases with white paint on top of it. It's very bold and daring. And he's confused, you know, because art is supposed to have cultural value. She looks at him. Oh, you haven't read Greenberg. You haven't read Clement Greenberg. This is your problem. He goes, oh, OK. <laughs> so he gets a book by Greenberg. He goes up to his um, loft. He finishes his book. He comes back down and totally trolls her. Oh, it's the purity of the painting materiality that makes it transcendent. It's pure art. The purity of it is what makes it. And so why are you able to charge it at this rate? And in his bewilderment, she believes him. She goes, now you get it. Now you understand the art world. This is what, you know, we're, we're doing a new fold here, right? So Wolf's primary claim here in the painted word was that the American art movements from 1945 to 1975 was a religion of the educated classes. If you want to understand one of the great weapons of the radical left, look at the art gallery. They're doing a lot of underground stuff there, and this is where a lot of them meet. Abstract expressionism, pop art, and minimalism were just different denominations of the modern gallery attempting to replace the church. The heretics in today's fine art world are those who expose that the emperor has no clothes on. In other words, that those, excuse me, those who see the culture bird for what it is, mere philistinism backed by second-generation liberal guilt of the upper class. This is the important thing. Like today, those who supported Wolf's claims were insulted as fascists, bigots and racists by the students of Rosenberg, Steinberg, and Greenberg. Sounds pretty familiar, right? While I agree with Mr. Wolf and his 
fantastical literary style of writing. I don't think he went deep enough, though. And I don't blame him, because no one could have predicted how the, 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 you know, the decadence would proliferate with social media and technology. The logical conclusion of this never-ending avant-garde reframing of high art is elitism, yes. So by nature, those who will consolidate in this industry are those in the anti-American elite. Agreed. But who did the Kulturberg associate themselves with? Who were the intellectuals? Who were the academics? Who supported these art gallery gatekeepers? Radical Marxists who spoke of feminist misandry against the patriarchy.